Hello everyone and welcome to part three of Infranodos tutorial where I will demonstrate the different AI features inside Infranodos text network analysis tool and also show you how you can use these AI features to get a general understanding of any discourse and also to generate new ideas. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. First of all, you will need to get your data into Infranodos. I explain how you can do that in part two of the tutorial. And then you need to work a little bit on the graph to make the structure uh, a little bit more suited for analysis. I also explained how to do that in the first part, and I will dive into it again in the end of this video. But right now I have the graph of my notes. So I have my notes here on the left. It's some voice notes, which I took using Otter AI. These were voice notes, and then they were converted by Otter AI into text, and then I imported them inside Infranotus. So here I have a visualization of my notes. Uh, for those of you who don't know how Infranotus work, uh, works, just a quick explanation. The words are the nodes, and then if the words are used in the same context, uh, like in this case I was using build a game a lot, uh, they will be closer to each other and also connected with an edge. And if a group of words tends to be used uh, frequently in the same context, in the context of this text, then they will have the same color and they will be located next to each other on the graph. So this representation allows us to get like a very good understanding of what is the structure of the text. And I have this representation here, so I can just look at the keywords and get a general understanding, or I can also click on that button, reveal high level ideas, also you have the button here, and then it will send those topical clusters there's a few of them here, to AI and generate the names for them for you. So you get a high level overview of the idea. So this is the first use case of how you can use AI inside Infranodus is just to create this sort of interpretation of content. And I find it's much better than using AI for summarization because when you summarize something, you just get like a paragraph that explains what the text is about, but when you have this structural overview of what the text is about with uh, some names for the topical clusters, you get a very re relational view of the content. So for example, I see that this text is about player relationships. So I know it's also about games, sound generation, data visualization, fractal patterns, emotional interaction, musical harmony, code measurement. So this is great because when I see the names for those clusters, it reminds me what I was thinking about. And uh, this is much better than just someone telling me in a few sentences what the text is about, because I start to put those topics into relation to one another. And this is the advantage of using this approach. Some people might find it more difficult, but I find that if I want to activate my thinking process, it's a great entry point. By the way, you can also, of course, generate a summary. So if I click here, uh, it's going to actually take all the statements uh, that are visible here and uh, generate a summary of what this text is about. But it might miss some things out and also I find the summary, uh, while it gives me a good explanation, it says about uh, that this text is about fractal nature of systems and how they can be observed in various phenomena such as a human heart. It talks about the importance of prototypes in game design. Okay, so it's basically talking about all the same uh, topics that I identified here, but when I look at those topics here, my motivation is to start putting them into relation together again, and this activates my thinking process more than just seeing the summary. So you can use both approaches, but I like to use uh, the topics first. Now, the next step that I like to do is uh, to just jump into each topic and see if there is anything interesting that I can start thinking about or developing further as an idea. So for instance, in this case, um, if I go into fractal patterns, I will see what I've been saying about fractal patterns. And I have actually two ways of doing this. So one way of using AI in this context is to select this topic and then you will see that this button changes to summarize visible. So what happens here? When I click on a topic, it filters the statements uh, that belong to this topic only. And then when I click this button, it's going to summarize only the topics that belong to this statement, to these statements, right? So as you could see, it didn't generate the summary from the, from the first time, so you just need to click regenerate a few times. And then here we see that uh, it's talking about how fractals can be seen in different scales. 
of universe and the different systems and the idea of repetition and change in patterns and how you can put this idea into relation with the notion of gameplay and storytelling and the potential for game designers to be storytellers. And also I'm talking about Chrome extension to analyze and summarize the text that is also mentioned. So it's great because it reminds me how I was putting the idea of fractals into relation with game design. And uh, I can dive deeper into the subject and see how I can develop it further. Let's keep this thought in mind. So I'm going to go to project notes and actually leave a note for myself here that put the idea of fractals into relation with game design. So I usually use this panel here to just record some thoughts and ideas that I have. Great. Then let's go into game, story, play. And by the way, if I click here, I see more topics that are used uh, in, this, in this context. So for example, player. Okay, so I select these four nodes. And what I can do now is to go into this AI insights module and I will have these four nodes selected. And then I can say like, okay, take the current context into account. So I'm going to tick here, use these four concepts and generate an idea for me. So then it's going to take these four concepts. It will also take the graph structure, send it to GPT-4 and ask it to generate an idea that would connect those concepts in an interesting way. So here it says that building engaging game narratives creates a symb symbiotic relationships. Interesting characters and plots inspire players to create their own stories, which in turn enrich the gameplay. The key is integrating movement, work, harmony, and learning experiences into ever-changing virtual world. That sounds interesting to me because it's talking about the importance of creating engaging narratives so that people want to create their own stories inside the gameplay. And uh, I think I will add this to notes as well. Save it here regenerate some more. So when, when you click generate more, you will have some more options here. Um, and uh, I think this is also nice because it's talking about interacting with the game on different scales from micro to macro. And I think that reminds me actually that I was writing down this connection between fractals and the uh, gameplay and how you need to have uh, different motivational structures and cycles that are both short-term and long-term uh, to create a very comprehensive experience for the user. So you basically build in some reward cycles uh, that are very short and also some reward cycles that are very long. Like uh, you achieve something within a matter of uh, several seconds, but you also have a bigger goal that you will achieve maybe in a, in a few days. So that reminds me of the connection between the fractals. I'm going to edit this note because uh, this was the connection that was identified earlier. And uh, I will edit this idea. So this I can also do. I don't have to take the idea from AI as it is, but I can also edit it to something I want and then I save it into my notes. So. This approach I really like because I'm not using the AI to create the ideas for me, but I'm using it as an assistant or as a stimulant to help myself think in the direction of what I've been thinking about before, to reactivate this thinking process because then I'm much more active in it and hopefully I'm going to reinitialize uh, some ideation process which I can then uh, apply into building something or uh, conducting research in the same direction. So this is how you would work with that. You can either select a topic like I did here and explore this topic, or you can also select a few nodes and explore those nodes as well. By the way, you can also use AI insights with the topic as well. So in the previous uh, example, I selected this topic and then summarized uh, them here. But also if I select a topic and I go to AI insights, this topic is going to be selected. And then I can also ask it to generate content related to this topic. So if I do that and I ask GPT-4 to generate an idea that, that relates to this topic, then it's going to um, generate an idea for me, which I might also be interested in using in my research. Can regenerate a few. 
Let's see if there is anything interesting here. Sometimes there is not. Let's see if it can come up with more ideas. Okay, so here it's talking about uh, transition from one state to another uh, and big changes. And also how we can think of fractals in time. So I'm going to actually take this idea and write about this separately, thinking about fractals in time. Okay, save this note here. So here I'm gathering some project notes, some ideas uh, which were generated with the help of AI. Now, another approach that I really like, uh, that is one of the central features of Infranodo, so I will just um, deselect all the notes here, uh, hide these topics now. When you go to the blind spots panel of analytics, you will have Infranodos identify uh, the parts of the discourse that could be better connected but are not yet. And this is a really power powerful feature because basically it takes the knowledge graph structure and then it identifies the topics uh, that could be connected but are not yet connected very well. And then it proposes you to think of a connection between them. So you can do that yourself and think like, okay, what is the connection between data visualization and fractal patterns? That's actually great because I was thinking about some sort of software that would visualize fractal patterns in time. So it also reminds me to explore this idea further, but I can also ask it to show another gap. So I'm going to highlight and then show another gap. And usually what you're looking for are the topics which are far apart from each other. So the further apart they are, the bigger is the gap, the more is the chance that you will generate an interesting idea. So for example, here it's about the connection between emotion and, frac and fractals. And this is great because it's really difficult to think uh, what is the connection between them, but it might be a very interesting connection that might generate a new idea. So what you can do here is to, th to think of a connection yourself or also click on AI insight question, and then it will send this structural gap to AI and ask it to generate an interesting question in relation to those two topics that bridges them together. So here it says, how does the level of physical interaction and emotional connection experience the virtual reality interfaces impact individuals' ability to learn and adapt to change on large scale over an extended period of time? So that's actually very interesting because it's talking about uh, how you can have an experience in VR by interacting with somebody and how you can then integrate this experience and learn something from it. So using VR for educational purposes, I can actually add this idea here using VR for educational purposes. Save it to notes and regenerate more. How does the use of virtual reality technology and long distance learning impact individuals emotional experience? How does it compare to impersonal learning in terms of change in their sense? and understanding of the world at, at large. So again, using this idea, that's actually interesting because it brings this idea of fractal or self-similarity across different time periods, but in terms of uh, learning and education. So how you can have an experience, a single experience, which will then extrapolate into your life. I can actually write down this idea that I had thanks to this question, uh, how a uh, brief experience can be integrated into everyday life. And I can say through VR, but also in life during training, doesn't have to be only about VR, uh, through uh, assimilating it into daily patterns. So there I'm going to save this idea again. And I'm going to ask it to show a new gap. So musical harmony, emotional interaction. Great. Nice connection. 
And here it's going to say how emotional experiences and interactions with written language affect their ability to create and sort harmonious systems and notes in musical compositions. This is great, a connection of our understanding to language and to music. So I'm going to save this also into notes and I'm going to explore it further. And then another gap and another gap and then gradually you will generate more and more ideas like this. Another thing that is very interesting is this panel here conceptual gateways. So this is always a little bit hard to explain, but let me make an analogy with a social network. So here the visualization is of the words that like to hang out together. And if words like to hang out with a lot of different words, they will be bigger on the graph. And if they like to hang out together frequently, then they will be closer to each other on the graph and have the same color. So this is a good analogy to understand how text network visualization works and how this knowledge graph represents the meaning inside the text, right? It gives you this kind of like social structure of a text. Now, the interesting part is how you can then look for some strange inconsistencies. So for example, when you have a community, you will sometimes have people who will not have so many connections, but the connections they have are to the people that are very important. And the same goes for words. There are some words in this discourse that have not so many connections relatively to their influence. So the connections they have are actually highly influential. You can see they're a little bit bigger than most of the words around them. They're usually at the periphery and uh, they might provide very good entrance points to this discourse. Because if you think about it, let's say you would like to talk to me about my ideas. If you talk about game design and, uh, you know, how to make, uh, like, I don't know, fractal systems and the different questions that arise, I will probably think that it's a little bit generic. Even if I start thinking about this topic myself, I know that I already talked about it a lot. I will probably want to speak about things that are very specific that relate to the main topic, but uh, in a way that can also open it up to other things I haven't thought about before. So this is exactly what those conceptual gateways are useful for. You discover those words, which could be very interesting entry points. So for example, here, play, story. And when I select these words, I see what else it's connected to. You can also go to relations and see here that it's connected to game, interesting people, base player a lot. By the way, I can also just ask AI to generate an idea that relates to those two words and all the words that are connected to it. And here it says that in a compelling story of play, interesting people form a base while in game it's the players. Generating lots of intrigue and good sense can bring audiences back for more. So I interpret it as an idea that you can create a, a community around people who are playing a certain game in order to have them more engaged. And this also reminds me about a very important aspect of uh, what I was thinking about, creating a community to engage people into a certain process so that they become protagonists in their own narrative. As you see, so far I'm not really using AI to come up with ideas for me. I'm using it as a conversational partner. My friend once said it's like having a sparring partner for writing. So it challenges me to think about things that I've been thinking about before, but in a way where I am uh, encouraged to make new connections. So it's a little bit more difficult than a normal process, but it also activates my thinking process. And it also helps me go along the surface of this knowledge graph that I created in a way where I'm connecting all the ideas that I find important in a new way. Now, if I come back to the blind spots and maybe select some other topics. So let's actually reset highlight, deselect those words and then highlight them again and see new ones. So for example, there was something about clicking on a certain topic. So that's interesting. Let's see what I was talking about clicking on a topic and also starting. So as you can see, they all belong to the same cluster of ideas. I can also click here and see in which context it was used. So here I was talking about the Chrome extension that I was working on at that time that is now released and how I can also click on a topic and uh, generate 
um, the names for them and how it should work. So it was kind of explaining how the interface would work. This idea is already realized, but what I can think of in connection to that idea now is how to relate it to this sort of gamification principle. So how I can use uh, the same idea, topic, click, uh, gamification, to make this whole process of discovering topical clusters for the people who use this extension more engaging, that they get something out from it, uh, which will make it more interesting for them to use it further. So that's always like a big challenge when you create a, a tool. And it reminds me now to think about this gamification aspect, which I actually lost track of a little bit while I was working on this extension, to be honest, because uh, I had to be very technical in programming it and making it work. And so it's a great reminder of what I can bring into my current project. Um, you would then continue in the same way over and over again. So actually, let's remove this word kind. And uh, gradually you will accumulate a lot of interesting ideas. And as I said, depending on your uh, objectives, you can use them in different ways. Like in my case, for instance, I'm going to take some of them out and integrate them into my working process. So for example, this notion of gamification and uh, the extension that I've been working on and also the connection between VR and education and this idea of fractal reward, uh, rewards that happen on small scale and, and on big scale. So as you can see, I already have some actionable insight that I can integrate into my projects. But for example, if you're a writer and you would like to create, let's say, an article based on all these ideas, what you could do is actually copy this whole text that you created here then you create a new graph. Um, we will call it new ideas. Perhaps a bad name because uh, I will not know what it's about later, but let's try it. And then I just paste it here, create a new text. Okay, I don't know why Grammarly had to jump out at this moment, probably unsolicited advertising. And here I have a visualization of all the notes which I took so far, right? So I see that I've been writing about creating experience for players, games. I can also reveal high level ideas. Uh, so it provides me a sort of overview of, of the different ideas that I now generated uh, thanks to this text. What I like to do in the very end is to actually take this graph and compare it with the ones I was using to actually generate it. So I'm going to click here on the comparison feature and then I'm going to say take this graph and compare it to the original one that I used. And here it's going to highlight how they connect to one another. So what are the similarities between them? It's kind of like uh, I merge them together and then I ask Infernodus to highlight what is the part in the Venn diagram that uh, overlaps so I see that it's overlapping on the idea of time and game and change and scale and fractal. So I've been talking about all these things, also topic and click. Remember the last one where I was talking about Chrome extension. So this is great because as I can see, uh, the coverage of the graph is quite wide range. Like it's almost like I covered everything that I've been talking about in my original notes. But there are also some things that I'm missing, like especially at this part here where I was talking about graph, database, gaps, and prototypes, and so on. So what I can also do is to ask Infernodus to show me how they're different from one another. So when I go to the comparison, I will ask, okay, show me how they actually differ from one another. And you have two different views. One view is uh, what exists in the original graph, so text notes, uh, but not in the new ideas, right? So there's quite a lot, but there is also these words which we don't need here. So let's hide them and see what else. And let's turn on the topic. So something about data generation, right? So, okay, uh, what about data generation? So I can go into main ideas, click on data generation and ask to create a summary. Of course, it comes with an error. It's probably too much information. Okay, if there is ever a bug like this, it means that you reached the limit on GPT-4 
which is uh, imposed uh, like the number of connections that you can have per minute, but it's okay. We can hack it by just looking at the topics here manually and see like, okay, so we have data generation, uh, how I can talk about, let's say, starting with the question and prototypes, develop maybe here, move the graph down a bit, and then see what are the statements where I use the, these terms in the same context. So for example, here I see, uh, if you start with a simple question, you're operating on top of all open AI data, but then you could also start with a certain context. And with this context, I think you should be able to import very easily. So you decide, I'm going to start with the context. So now I remember that I was also thinking about a certain way of querying data using a question and how you can select the context of what you query. So that reminds me another very important aspects of my notes, which I missed out when I was um, analyzing the graph, which was about this whole thing of how you can actually use the AI and the different approaches of how you can query a certain text in order to generate interesting insights from it. So I'm going to go back to the original graph. Actually, can go here, text notes, and add something about those AI notes. Here, oops, not loading. Usually it happens when you make a demo, things uh, don't work as well as, as they usually do. But that's okay, we'll just wait until it loads. Maybe I have some problem with the connection. And I will write that uh, use, uh, or let's say explore the different ways of generating questions and answering those questions using AI models that take the context into account. So that reminds me another very important aspect of what I was thinking about, which I can now integrate into my thinking process. And once again, if I wanted to make an article from this, I would then perhaps make a new graph from it like I did before and then analyze it uh, again and then start writing probably in some other software that just has like a Zen view that allows me not to see anything and just to create a narrative. And then I would compare this narrative to what I'm, I was writing about. But if like in my case now I'm working on a few projects at the same time, so I'm gonna take this as a reminder of things that I have to think about when I'm developing those projects. My major takeaways personally right now is to introduce this gamification aspect into the tool that I'm working on and also explore uh, these uh, different ways of querying AI algorithms. So this is actionable insight, which I can take from this process and uh, use it to integrate into my current work. Now, the very last thing that I wanted to show you, which I mentioned at the beginning, is how you process the graph before analyzing it. So this is bonus content which you might not need, but it might also be useful. So originally I had a graph like this and as it was voice notes made on author AI, it was pretty difficult to sort of start analyzing from here because uh, I have a lot of words which don't really carry a lot of meaning. Like for example, kind, like I was using the word kind, it's kind of like, this is kind of this and so on. So what I do at the beginning, I like to select them and to hide them from the graph. And then also the word like thing, I don't need it here. So I'm going to delete it. Then time, I can see in which context I use the word time. So I can go into relations. I see that it's connected to a lot of important concepts, but also some of them might not be so relevant. So I'm going to go into the statements because here it shows me which statements I use the notion of time with. So here it says uh, all the time with the time. So I kind of use it as a, a marker of saying when things happen at the same time or a long time and so on. So, so perhaps I don't need it for analysis. I'm also going to hide it. Then also make, perhaps I don't need it here. So I'm hiding a few words. And what you want to do is to reach a level of topical diversity, which is optimal. Right now I have medium. If you have low medium, um, you need to try to move it a little bit further to the right. And if you hover here, you will see that when it's 0 0.4, then it's uh, it's uh, optimal level. So 
I try to reach 0 0.4, I don't have to, so it's not always the objective, but the closer I am, the better. Here, I don't see any other words I can delete, so that's fine, I can stop here, but my topical structure becomes more pronounced, so when I generate high-level ideas, they will be much more specific, the topics will also be clustered better, so that will indicate to me how well, you know, I can analyze this discourse and how well I can make a distinction be between all those different topics. So, for example, here you see you have, let's say, topical rela play relationships on one side and data visualization on another. And then you have an interesting one here, sound generation, which is in the middle of everything. So it means that at that time, this, this topic of generating sound was quite central. I was connecting it to a lot of different ones and using it as an inspiration to think about this topic. So this is how you could process the graph before analyzing it. And uh, it might be useful because uh, it gives you a clearer structure of the topics inside. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you got something out from it and that you will integrate it into your own workflows. If you have any questions, please leave a comment to this video. I will be happy to answer. Also, subscribe to this channel so you get informed when the new videos are out. And uh, I hope you enjoy using this tool. You can try it on infranodus.com. And thank you very much.